Forensics, computer security, things like that. And my very first day there, um, I was asked to go pull tapes for a subpoena, um, which I promptly demonstrated I was terrible at so that they would ask me not to do that because I figured that would be a career killing move there, being involved in that kind of stuff. But my first experience in politics was that it's rough, right? Everybody is out to get everybody else to win. And I say this, I'm not a, mind you, I'm not a supporter one way or another of any political party. I'm a libertarian, so nobody wants me, right? Well, I'm going to push you back on yeah, this. As you yeah. said, like, my understanding is that you know, your advising may have been related, may have had some direct impact here. Potentially. Um, so, you know, one of the interesting things that, that I learned there um, was that really politically adept people very rapidly figured out that they didn't want to use computers at all, right? And we can all sort of look at it in our own lives, right? That we use computers and it leaves this huge trail, right? All kinds of stuff. And there's probably things that we say to people that maybe we don't want other people to hear. And years later, after I left the White House, I was asked to work on a project to recover those tapes for the White House. And lo and behold, we found out that the president, in fact, did not use email because he kind of got it, right? And I remember one time we were getting training on this. The lawyers said, um, you know, the easiest way not to get subpoenaed is to just not have a record. So unless you need a record, don't create a record. So when I heard that she had her own email server, my thought was, of course. So this is an administration that, like all other administrations, would like to control their image. So it didn't surprise me. It's entirely understandable. And when I was there, it was, I can't tell you how many times we got subpoenaed. It was, it was a fairly regular occurrence. Well, and for all of the headache that the Clintons, that Hillary has gotten for running her own email server, who knows what the headache would have been if we discovered other things. So it's hard to talk about what we can't say. Mind you, I'm not condemning it. Right? Yeah. I, think, I think a public servant should keep records, right? We should be able to know what they do, but I can understand. Transparency. I'm yes. not condoning it, but I understand. Well, it wasn't on WikiLeaks. Not yet, right? Not yet. Um, so moving on to another story, um, and again, you know, we don't have to talk about this, but my understanding is that Sean Parker had you in his living room, and he's like, I got this fantastic idea. Yes. Would you like to come on, be one of the first people? And you were like, this is illegal and doesn't make money. That, that was basically it in a nutshell. I, that was my comment to him was, how are you going to make money and how are you not going to go to jail? Uh, but I hope you're successful at you know, not going to jail and making a lot of money. So I turned to the Sean, Sean Parker's done pretty well at not going he's to jail and making well money. He, he's smarter than me in that regard, I guess. I think he was at the forefront of this, like, it doesn't matter if it's illegal, we will figure it out. That's what lawyers are for, right? Yeah. Well, and, and maybe that's what some of us technologists are for. Uh, when, when we chatted earlier, and we're like, I, I was like, I don't even know where to start with you, because uh, really, like, you've done so many things, where do we start? He said, well, let's talk about regulation. You know, and I'm admittedly a very fierce libertarian. Me too. We've had a lot of conversations about this. We were at Mach 37 together in DC. Um, so let, let's talk about that. Let, let's just open ended, like, let's talk about regulation. So, my degree is in economics, um, and I'm a fierce libertarian, and I've had to reevaluate those thoughts as I've helped various government agencies that regulate security to figure out how to deal with this problem. And the magic word is risk, right? We use that word all the time in cybersecurity, but what does it mean? It means something fundamentally different to everyone. So a company that's trying to make profit is looking at this word in a different way than someone who might be adversely impacted by some decision they make that increases the risk to somebody else. So that's why I got involved in the nuclear stuff. Here's an incredibly risky thing, right? What do you do? We have to regulate it, right? At some point, some things, the risk equation is broken, right? It's, if you look at an activity that in an inherently itself is risky, you look at that business and you say, well, this business is clearly willing to take that risk. This isn't to pick on nuclear. It's just to say that self-regulation has challenges. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. So I think there is a role for government sometimes to come in and say, you know what? you're a little too comfortable with taking that risk. 
we're going to have to step in and tell you to do something to prevent the consequences of that risk taking from affecting other parties. I'm all for that personally. I mean, no one's asked me, but I think that nuclear makes sense to regulate. There are certainly spaces where I support it. Uh, let's shift topics, talk about Atomicor. Again, like, I think this is one of the most interesting companies that people haven't heard about. And that's just because you've been heads down working on it, as opposed to like, everyone's heard about me and I haven't even done that much, but like, I'm real noisy about it. You're real good at that. Thank you. <laughs> My mom's like, I've never seen anyone fail up as well as you. <laughs> She's like, do they know? I'm like, mom, they know. People know. She's like, I'm going to tell them. <laughs> you do that, mom. <laughs> so, so, so let's let's talk about Atomicor just a bit. Like, why you made it. Like, what it means for you that you're making the software that's supposed to replicate you in a company. And like, what advice you have for the folks here who you know want to do security right for themselves? Well, I, I think the last speaker really said something very important. I right? mean that. Um, you can't expect everybody to be an expert. Um, I used to be part of the, the security crowd that would say, hey, you got to build secure software and you darn new developers make things about vulnerabilities. That's impossible, right? Human beings make mistakes. Things will happen. Bad guys are smart. So if you're trying to be secure in this world, I think the first thing you have to do is you have to understand your own strengths and weaknesses and you have to be honest about them, right? What are you good at? Are you good at security? Be honest about that. If you're not, that's fine. At least you know what your weaknesses are. And that helps to kind of level set things because sometimes you have to accept the reality that maybe the bad guy is better than you and they're gonna get in. And I'll give you an example. We were helping a very famous right of center think tank that was being penetrated by a uh, nation state. And they were concerned about that. And our advice to them was there's nothing you can do about it. It just is. You can't stop a large nation state from penetrating your organization. So sometimes security is about accepting the consequences, right? It's okay, this is gonna happen, and figure out a way to build your business around it. You're gonna get broken into, compromises are gonna happen. So you should have a plan, but your plan should also include how you intend to operate if there's nothing you can do about it. I think that's useful, and that's something I don't think I've ever heard before, but um, that gets to the privacy nihilism, that's a bit of a theme throughout the day. Uh, I do think that some companies can secure themselves to a limited extent, which is part of the software that you've been making. It's true. Um, along that theme, the software that we make, we kind of took a different approach, right? There's only a few things you can do in security, right? You can prevent things, you can detect things, you can deter people, and you can recover. That's about it, right? You can't really do much else. In security, we all, the ideal is we'll prevent it. They're just not going to get in because we're awesome, right? That's great. We want to do that. But what happens once they get in? So the tack that we took was let's just accept that they're in and let's just build something that's whole purpose is to recover. Just make it so it doesn't matter. So since we're uh, running short on time, uh, if we take one question, is that cool with you? Yeah, sure. All right, one question from the audience and then we'll uh, bring the stage to Ron Chanel. You're ready after us, Ron? All right, uh, one question. Yes, please. So you're talking about the software that you created, which is supposed to minimize your recovery process. What's your shortest amount of time to recover? Instantly. No. Yes. <laughs> yes. The, because the difference is, so traditionally the way we try to recover things is we think, oh, I need to clean the system. I've got to remove it. I've got to do all this stuff, right? The difference is you have to look at what the adversary is trying to accomplish, right? So, Think about exfiltration of data, for example. Right? If you just prevent the exfiltration of the data at the moment that it occurs, it doesn't matter that they still have software in there that's trying to push it out. Right? So there's an example. You can't stop things instantly. Yeah. And that's the goal for us. Right? It has to be that way anyway, because if you're already accepting the fact that they're in and it takes you a long time to recover, they've probably already accomplished their goal. Right? You've got to do things quickly. I guess that depends on your definition of mean time to recover. Though, right? Well, you know, if we're talking about the server crash, died, caught on fire, that's a different kind of recovery, right? You know, talking about an active insider or whatever the case may be, that's a different type of recovery. Yeah. So we don't recover everything. Right? We can recover, you know, bad guys breaking in and doing bad things to the system. Yeah. Not catching on fire, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Thank you so much for uh, coming on.